Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Today we're at Twin Valley. This is a fire department that's on the corner of Berks County and Cheshire County, PA. Let's go take a look. Twin Valley Fire Department is a collaboration between two fire departments. It was Elverson and Morgantown Fire Department. They merged in 2004. 2010, they moved into this building. So let's go take a look what they have. As we're coming up the stairs here, before we take you downstairs and show you all the fun stuff, we're gonna take you down the office area. This is where all the business is done for the firehouse. Coming down this main hallway is where their offices are. It's nice and clean and organized up here. They have the chief's office, the treasurer office. What I really like is the chief office. If you leave this door open, he can look right out the window and see the engine bay. Finishing up the administrative side, we're gonna head across the hall and see their conference room and their weight room. The immediate left down the hallway, we walk into their conference room. This is where I want to take a minute and tell you guys a little bit more about this fire station specifically. The land that this is on was donated by the local school. That's an awesome way for a community to have resources at their fingertips. So if a child goes down or a fire happens at the school or even an active shooter, you have EMS and fire ready to go. Very cool to do. I'm seeing that more and more. We had one in Indiana before that did that too. This station specifically runs 350 to 400 calls a year. They have 50 active members, including their line officers, so they have a pretty good group of volunteers going on right now. It is 100% volunteer. But in order to generate revenue to help support them, they rent out their property. Elverson EMS is attached to the building, but they're a separate entity. They rent that space. Tower Direct also rents a small office space. Last but not least, outside, they have a cell tower. That's from Sprint. They get some finance from that too. These guys are very fiscally responsible with their money. They have a business plan that allows them to replace most of their trucks about every 15 years. Coming out of the conference room, there's one more room we wanna hit. This is their fitness room. It's kind of a small one, but it has everything that they need in order to stay fit. One of the benefits of being a volunteer are these little rooms. You know, you have the opportunity to do a full workout here. You don't have to join your local fitness club. You can come here, give a little bit of your time, and get this in return. Making our way off the second floor down to the apparatus bay, let's go take a look because they have a lot of cool equipment. Coming down onto the apparatus floor, they have three brush trucks, they have a utility, they have their ladder, and their workhorse, which is their rescue. This is their 2018 Pierce Heavy Rescue. They run about 21 miles of the turnpike. They're also doing about 75% rescues out of this house. Right next to their Heavy Rescue is a 2009 ladder. This is a wet ladder. The reason for that is because it has its own water and pump. It's a 75 foot rear mount. Right next to the ladder is their squad. This is a 2006 F350. It's set up to bring extra personnel or even do traffic control. Directly behind their rescue ladder and squad, they have three brush trucks. The reason for that is they cover French Creek, which has 7,528 acres. Back in 2012, they had a pretty large fire that burned over 741 of that acres. So it's very important to have these trucks. Their number two brush truck is a 2008 F-350 that carries 250 gallons of water. Their number three brush truck is a 1968 five ton that carries over a thousand gallons of water. And the last truck on this side of the apparatus bay is their 2003 F-350 brush. This is their number one truck. What's really nice about this truck is they built this themselves. It came in as a standard F-350. They were cutting the back, they put the tanks in, they did everything themselves. This goes back to them being very fiscally responsible and having the community jump in and help build it. As we go from one side of the apparatus bay to the other side, we're gonna go through their gear room. But right off their gear room is their little radio room. Coming into the gear room, you have to remember this building was built in 2010, but it meets today's regulations for the NFPA because it has its own filter system and a dehumidifier. All the gear is in here, it's isolated by the doors, and they have an IM responding behind me so you know what apparatus is going out and who's getting on it. On the second side of the apparatus bay is where they store their two engines, they have a chief's vehicle and another utility with a couple of different trailers. 
The first engine we run into is engine 69.1. This is a 2015 Pierce that has 1,000 gallons of water with a 2,000 gallon per minute pump. It's also their second due out piece along with that rescue. The next engine we run into is engine 69.5. This is a 2006 Pierce that has 3,000 gallons of water with a 1,500 gallon per minute pump. But what's really nice about this station is all their apparatus across the board have rescue tools on it, so they're ready to go at any moment. Coming around the corner of engine 69.5, we run into their utility. This is a 2013 F350, and the purpose of this is to tow many of these trailers. In this first trailer, they have a 2007 Yamaha Rhino 660. They use this for many different purposes, from bringing personnel to the fire or even doing a rescue. The next vehicle in their apparatus bay is a 2007 Tahoe that they share between many of their line officers. So this is their containment trailer. It has all the supplies they need to contain any hazardous spills. The final trailer here is owned by the Fire Chiefs Association. It's done for training, it's their fire prevention and safety unit, and they take it all around the county. It's time to take you into the crew room, bunk room, training room, and their museum. But before we do that, hit that subscribe, hit that notification. Making our way into the crew room, I'm going to take just a second and talk about how this came about. The contractor that built this whole building became friends with the fire guys here. He ended up becoming a volunteer. Shortly after that, he decided to volunteer his time and built this crew room. Besides having a nice crew area, Twin Valley likes to preserve their history. And to do that, they put up many of their news articles and pictures of their big fires. Coming out of their crew room, we're gonna head to their bunk room real quick. This is where they're gonna be able to rest after some of those big calls or those bad weather days. The bunk room area has enough room to sleep 12. That's plenty of personnel to fill those trucks. Coming down the hallway, you're gonna see that this is the beginning of their museum. This is where they have many of the pictures and the cases are full with memorabilia. But before we hit the big museum, let's check out their training room. This training room is the training room that every fire department should have. It has all the high-tech equipment that's necessary for today's services. It's also large enough to fit most of their members. Behind me are the members from 2010. They were instrumental in the collaboration in the building of this station. Leaving the training room, this is the moment I've been waiting to show you. This is by far the largest and most detailed museum in a firehouse that we've seen yet. Those who are not in the fire service may not understand the history and traditions. So one of their life members decided to donate most, if not all of these pieces for this museum. Thank you for watching another episode of Station Cribs. We want to thank Twin Valley for inviting us out. If you're ever in the area and you want to take a real close look at this museum, stop on by. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe, hit that notification so we can keep bringing you more.